Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So this is Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm here for the Phoenix Reptile Expo, which is naturally in Phoenix, Arizona. But it's been a long time since I've actually been down here for this expo. It's been, I don't know, like eight or nine, maybe 10 years. I do know that it's been a while because the last time I was here, I bought a spider ball python for like eight, nine hundred dollars. So it's been a while. But anyway, I'm really looking forward to getting in there and checking out all the amazing vendors and all the cool herps that are here at the Phoenix Reptile Expo. The line is already around the block, so let's get in there and check out the Phoenix Reptile Expo. I'm Dave Kaufman, and I tour the world to see how reptiles are living in the wild. And while I'm at it, checking out some of the most amazing facilities and reptile expos as well. It's all about learning, appreciation, and conservation. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Zilla, we are dedicated to the innovation of caging, lighting, and equipment solutions that provide proper husbandry for your pet's long and happy life. To see our entire catalog, visit ZillaRules.com. State 48 Exotics is here. So what have you seen that is just awesome here? Uh, well, I've seen really two tables just now. Uh, El Segundo's and Ball Life's. Always and, uh, have amazing stuff at El Segundo. Dude, that, that, uh, that more like orange glow is, is a, such a cool morph. I know. And then that uh, scaleless over there that he has right there. I think that's the first scaleless I've seen in Arizona. Like, I don't even think anybody's ever brought one of one of the shows here. Well, yeah, because so. snakes in Arizona need those scales to keep cool. That's what they say. Right, yeah, it gets right. warm here, I guess. Sounds oh, yeah. scientific but, to me. Yeah. <laughs> So for the Rattle On Award winner for the best snake here at the November 2019 Phoenix Reptile Expo, I'm giving the Rattle On Award to the very first ever venomous snake. Wait until you see this beauty over at Arizona Herptological Association. All right, so we're gonna take this beauty out. Oh, oh what a beauty. So I've got Jill and Mike here from the Arizona Herptological Association. Uh, so what can you tell me about this snake? We are actually not positive um, where he came from. He was purchased at a show in South Carolina and then actually donated um, to the club. Gotcha. So we don't know a lot about where he came from or how old he is or anything like that. He's pretty, pretty magnificent. He is extremely yeah. magnificent. And look at how chill he is. Until he's not. Until he's not. <laughs> Look at that. So for those of you who don't know, timber rattlesnakes have this yellow gold color to them and these really dark, oh, look at them, that little agitation pose right there. But timber rattlesnakes have really yellow to gold background colors with those really cool black chevrons like that. And what makes this animal so unique is that it's a xanthic, which means that it's lacking all red and yellow pigment. And you can see that it creates basically a slate gray and black snake, which makes this rattlesnake extremely unique. And one of the coolest things about this rattlesnake, look at that rattle. So a rattlesnake in the wild would not have a rattle this complete and this long, but that is just an amazingly huge rattle on this snake. 
So when it comes to rattlesnake morphs, especially timber rattlesnake morphs, I've seen hypos and I've seen photos of albinos. I've never seen an albino in person, but this is definitely the first azanthic timber rattlesnake I have ever seen. So rattlers, a lot of you know that I'm from Minnesota and the only rattlesnake that we have left native to Minnesota is the timber rattlesnake. So I already have a soft spot in my heart for timber rattlesnakes, but comment below if you guys know what the other type of rattlesnake that was once native to Minnesota, but is now considered to be extirpated, which means that it's not extinct in the wild completely, but it is extinct now from the state of Minnesota. So comment below if you know what the other species of rattlesnake was that used to be native to Minnesota. But man, I'll tell you, when you come across an azanthic timber rattlesnake, especially because it's the first azanthic timber rattlesnake I have ever seen in person, you can see why this wins the November 2019 Phoenix Reptile Expo Rattle On Awards for the best snake here. So just a few weeks ago, I did an online poll where I asked you guys what you thought about the Rattle On Awards and what you guys thought I should be doing new and different with it. And one of the comments that I got most was to do a new category to give the Rattle On Award to the best new breeder. And I thought that was such an amazing idea that here at the Phoenix Reptile Expo, I'm gonna do just that. And I found the perfect winner for the all new category of best new breeder over at Get Morphed BP. All right, so this is Donald here at Get Morphed BP. Uh, so, you know, I'm Donald J, um, owner of Get Morphed BP. You know, started off uh, back in 09. Um, was just kind of doing what everybody else is doing, breeding things and getting them gone. And then I uh, got a divorce, kind of switched everything up and uh, really focused on recessives hard. Um, was was kind of into things where people were kind of blind eyeing it. Uh, right. Um, I'm really glad that I kind of stopped and refocused and kind of regrouped myself to be where I'm at now. So really within like the past five years, that is basically the evolution of what you have here That's today. Every, yeah, everything you see here is is the five year mark. Um, everything I had prior to that has kind of gone to buddies and everything like that. But every everything here is, has been within five years. And, and I, um, other than luck, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at right now. But you know, well, a lot of luck and a lot of holding back. Right. It takes you a know? lot of dedication and a long term yeah, plan. Abs absolutely. You yep. Know, uh, Everybody looked at me like I was crazy. Oh, you're, you're buying these ball pythons. You're buying this. Where are you making money at? Well, it's hard to make money when you've got to hold back the stuff because nobody else has it or I can't afford to exactly. buy it from the other person. Yep. A long-term plan is the difference between people like you and people that, absolutely. you know, get into it and then get right out of it because they're not making money. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Everybody, you know, they, they think they can get into it and sell a snake for hundred bucks and they're just going to keep doing it. And, uh, Fortunately, it doesn't work that it's way. It's a different ball game nowadays. Yes, it is. Well, so you produced the uh, the Grails and the Leo Grails, which are lavender clowns. Yes, I was the first one to produce the, the Leopard Grail, and that was uh, last year. And he ended up being a stud for me and, and produced some high quality Grails for me this year. Uh, proved out two of the lavender possible head clown girls. So really, really got a big jump on it with proving out some possible head. Fantastic. So. How did you feel like that first moment when you realized, you know, you saw that slit in the egg, that snake came out of the egg, and you realized it, you got the grail? It was, it was, it was honestly, it, it, it shocked me because uh, it was my second year into it. The first year, missed everything. Got all lavenders, not one clown, nothing. I was like, well, we'll do it one more year, and then she's probably going to be going somewhere else. Right. And uh, the next year, I was, I was, I think it was the second egg I had cut open. And it was just amazing. He, he was sitting perfect. His head was right there on the top of the egg, so we knew exactly what he was. Nice. When he was coming out. So look at this. Just the peppering on the sides going up, just super bright pops. It's, it's, it's hard to even explain unless you really see it in person. 
That thing just glows in the dark. He's, he's amazing. And he's very, very reduced, almost like my uh, boy, but even more reduced. Thought about holding this guy back, but he's such a stud. If he goes, he goes. All right, so this one is the Grail Clown, basically the Lavender Clown without Leopard. And as a comparison, there's the Grail with Leopard. Just, just makes them pop that much more. That is amazing. Looking to put Cine in with it, I'm thinking that's going to really make them pop even yep. more. Yep. Um, so it's just, it, I, I love these genetics. This is absolutely my favorite. Uh, you know, when I first started, I was kind of high into the clown pied stuff, and right. these, these ones just once I hatched that one, that was it. Absolutely. You know, it, I love clown pieds, but you can't can't beat this. No, you can't. And you know what? When you have a morph like this, the sky is absolutely the limit. So. Can you imagine this with a mahogany or, Ooh. you know, just fill in the black blank. head? A black head, right. Spot nose? Spot nose, yeah. Yep. So, Don, congratulations on all your success. You have a, an incredible collection here that you have built within five years, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you do in the next 5, 10, 15 That's years. So. Right now, the years are just going to get crazier and crazier, so just expect to see that next level stuff. Awesome. Well, congratulations, man. Thank you very well much. Well deserved. Thank you. So you can see why I'm giving Get Morphed BP the very first ever Rattle On Award for Best New Breeder. So I just ran into this rattler. What's your name, pal? My name is Dasa. Okay, cool. And uh, what did you get there? It's got a red tail boa for really cheap over there. <laughs> red yeah, tail boa yeah. for really cheap. How much is really cheap? I got it for 50 bucks. 50 bucks. All yeah. right. Yeah. Now, is nice that your deal. first snake? No, it's not my first snake. I have a carpet and I have a normal bipolar python. And that's about it. That's about it. Hey, you can't beat a boa for 50 bucks. You can't. <laughs> All right. So I just ran into these two rattlers. What's your name? Bethany. And Bethany, and what did you get there? Uh, it's a banana pinstripe, I believe. Whoa, that looks like a banana pinstripe to me. And here, let me open up this one. That's great. Now, is this your first snake? It's my first ball python. I have an albino king snake at home, and two rough green snakes, and a Pac Man frog, and breeding mice, and a bunch of fish. Nice. So, Nice. My mom doesn't know about this. <laughs> She's like, don't bring anything home. <laughs> She's about to. So hypotrans, genetic stripe, and look at that paradoxing. She's a what you call a high expression paradox. So wow. it is literally all over her. That is a great looking bearded dragon. So I just ran into this awesome rattler. This is Ulysses. And you have a YouTube channel yourself. Tell us all about it. Uh, so I'm a crested gecko breeder. I like to educate kids on how to take care of crested geckos. And that is your channel right there? Yeah, lizards for kids and more. So it's a reptile channel for kids. Yeah. I am definitely going to put that link in the description below so everybody can check you out. Keep up the great work. I got a gargoyle gecko. Wow. That is a good looking gargoyle gecko. Yeah, he's really beautiful. And are you going to feature him in one of your videos? Yeah, probably. Very, very cool. So what got you excited about teaching other kids? Uh, just because usually people are scared of reptiles. I just want to eliminate that fear. Because... Fantastic. We need more kids doing what you do. Absolutely. So now it's time to do the Rattle On Awards for the best lizard here. And I am totally geeking out about what I found over at Predator Pet Center where I have found the coolest lizard. I am completely 
geeking out over this lizard. So this is a giant Chinese butterfly agama. And I used to have a butterfly agama. They were the smaller ones from Thailand and the rest of uh, the Siam Peninsula when, I don't know, years and years ago I used to have one and I loved it. And I always knew that these giants existed out here, but I've never seen one until here because you just don't see these giant Chinese butterfly agamas at expos. So the cool thing about these lizards, other than how they look and that they're just giants, but they're little puppy dogs. Look at this little guy. They're about as chill as a bearded dragon. And on that note, their care is very similar to a bearded dragon. So a lot of people that were keeping these in the early days figured that they came from China, they came from the Siam Peninsula, they came from basically rainforests and therefore they were keeping them as such and every one of them didn't do well, they were dying, um, they had all sorts of problems. And then somebody went over there and actually found out where these guys were hanging out and what habitats these guys were occupying in their home range. And what they were finding is that these aren't tropical lizards at all, actually. These live in the low-lying valleys. And it's not necessarily a desert where these guys come from, but it is a very dry, hot grassland. And as soon as we figured that out, these guys began to thrive in herpticulture. And just look at how big and healthy this absolutely amazingly beautiful lizard is. But just look at those beautiful, almost white tiger, almost zebra stripes down its side. But look at that red head that just kind of disappears down the back of a gray, like almost starry night. So as I said, the care for these guys is very similar to a bearded dragon. They will eat crickets and other bugs, but they'll also eat squash and pumpkin. And that makes them an omnivore, which means that, of course, they eat both meat and plant matter. And man, these are, again, just the most amazing lizards that you simply don't see at many reptile expos. And that's why, for sure, I'm giving this lizard the November 2019 Phoenix Reptile Expo Rattle On Award for the best lizard here. The climate of Arizona is really conducive to breeding tortoises in this climate. And so there's a lot of tortoise breeders here. So when it comes time to give the Rattle On Award to the best Chelonian here, there is a huge selection of tortoises here. But I found a really awesome one over at Arizona Tortoise Compound where I have found this amazing Burmese star tortoise. And the reason why I selected this to be the winner is simply because of how rare Burmese star tortoises are. These are found primarily in Burma, which is now Myanmar, which is right next to Thailand. But these are critically endangered in the wild. As a matter of fact, they're CITES-1 and they cannot be imported or exported without the proper paperwork. Well, but what's happening, unfortunately, is that these are being exported out of Myanmar and they're all going to China and other Southeast Asian countries, but they're not for pets. They're actually exporting these for food and they are not going through the proper channels to export these out of the wild. So this is a critically endangered tortoise in its home range. And to see such a successful captive breeding initiative with these tortoises, man, you know, the Barkers once wrote a book called The Invisible Ark. And when you see a critically endangered tortoise like this, that unfortunately is being completely decimated in the wild for food, man, we are really creating the invisible ark with these tortoises. And to see this captive bred specimen right here, man, I'll tell you, out of all the tortoises that are found at this expo, it was a no-brainer why this Burmese star tortoise is my pick for the November 2019 Phoenix Reptile Expo Rattle On Awards for the best Chelonian here. 
So Rattlers, I'm going to be down in Arizona for a couple more days filming a couple of more really awesome episodes and in that I'm going to go and visit the Arizona tortoise compound and see how these and other tortoises are being captive bred to again create that invisible arc in captivity. So hit that subscribe button and when you do hit that bell because you do not want to miss those episodes and until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession and rattle on.